So this is the beginning of a major change in our fish room. We talked about this a couple weeks ago in the video. I'll put in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. We're changing the fish room and the first thing that has to happen, step one, the beginning of it all, is taking down the Nano Nook. If you'll allow me just a couple minutes to explain the history of this, the Nano Nook was originally Joanna's area where she could keep smaller tanks, Nano, do some aquascaping, keep some really cool Nano fish, and in fact, there were quite a few videos where she sat right here shooting those videos in her little corner of the fish room. And so it's got a little bit of nostalgia and it's a little bit tough to break this down, but we have to start here because I need this area to store tanks. And so as we break down other parts of the fish room, like the 40 breeders and the 33 longs, that's coming next. I've got to have a place to put those tanks so I can redo the walls, so I can start thinking about what we're going to be setting up. And so this is the first thing that has to come down. And if you think way back to when we first set it up, it had all those little two and a half gallon betta tanks. And Joanna was thinking about breeding bettas. And eventually she realized, you know what? I think I'd like to go with larger tanks than these really small tanks. And so we transformed the Nano Nook into something slightly larger. And that's what you see here. And we had some 20 gallon lawns and we had some bookshelf tanks and some seven and a half gallons. And that worked out really well for quite some time until we started bringing in more and more fish for sale at swaps. And I really needed more tanks for quarantine. At that point, we moved her out of the Nano Nook and into the fish room. And she got some 20 longs and some 29s that she could aquascape. Well, now here we are. We're making this side a gallery. This area that we're in now is going to be, serve as a storage area for a lot of the fish room supplies and things that we use every day. And quite frankly, we're just running out of room. And so today, we're gonna break down these tanks. We're gonna move the fish out. Let's talk about what we're gonna do. All right, so this is the area we've got to break down. I've got all the filtration off right now, so you can hear me, but I'm going to be turning that back on real real soon here. And so the Nano Nook is actually across from the two 125s you see here on the right-hand side. Over here, we've got the following tank, starting in the upper left-hand corner. That is a 14-gallon bow front. That tank is empty. We had some rummy nose grass bores in there. They've since been sold off at the swaps. And so that is, we just have to empty that and clear that one out. Down below that, the middle 20 on the left-hand side, that has the Volcano Tetras. Those Volcano Tetras are going to move temporarily to a fish tank on the other side of the fish room. Originally, our plan was to put them in the 150 with the Geophagus. However, that tank is eventually coming down too, so I want to move the fish as little as possible through this entire process. And so they're going to find a 40-gallon breeder. They're going to more than double the amount of swimming space they have, which is great because they are active fish. And so I'll show you that tank in a little bit. Down below that, the 20 on the far left lower side, there's only three dwarf neon rainbows in there. I'm just gonna move those with the dwarf neon rainbows and the 75 gallon on this side to hang out with their buddies. Over here on the right hand side, there's a couple bookshelf tanks and a couple seven and a half gallon aquariums. Now the seven and a half gallons are both empty in the middle. So we can just empty those out, clear those out. The top, and bottom bookshelf tanks are quarantine tanks for some geophagus. What I plan to do with both of those fish or both of those tanks is move the geophagus into a 40 breeder on the other side. They needed to move anyway because they were getting to a point where I think those tanks, if we kept them in there any longer, they were probably going to start having problems with growth just because it's not a huge volume. It's It's got a plenty of length that even that six foot or I'm sorry, that six gallon bookshelf tank you see at the top, is like almost 30, I think it's 30 inches long, where the one on the bottom, that nine gallon bookshelf tank might be like 32 inches. So it's it, they're very long tanks. There's just not a lot of depth uh, front to back and not a lot of height. So those all have to come down as well. So let's get to work. So one really important thing when it comes to quarantine, one of the things that we do is we have a hose for each quarantine area. This hose never leaves the nano nook. If there's ever an outbreak of disease, it's just confined within these tanks. We're not spreading it around the fish room by using different equipment, different nets, different hoses. So this is the hose we're gonna to use to start emptying out these aquariums. If you can see this but in this tank on the left and I love that when this happens there is a rock that is covered in like a green hair type of algae but it doesn't get very large and it looks just like it's supposed to be there I love it when that happens 
So I'm actually probably gonna preserve those rocks, put them in another tank because I just think they're so cool. So things are moving along. We've got the two tanks here empty. Those were easy. Those were only seven and a half gallons. I'm gonna go with this one next because I think let's get the weight off the top of these shelves first so that we're not creating any instability. So let's get going. All right, so this is gonna be the Volcano Tetra's new home for right now. Like I said, these are really rare fish. They're gonna be in here with some Congo Tetras, a few uh, Egyptian mouth brooders, and a couple of Harlequin Rasboras, but they should be just fine in here for the amount of time they're gonna be in here. They're about the same size. And there they go. And so they're getting more space. They're getting twice as much space as they're used to. A Little bit more security in terms of the rocks and the wood. And it'll be interesting to see how they do in this group. It'll take a little while for everybody to get used to one another. But it's a big enough group where I don't anticipate any bullying issues or anything like that. All right, this tank is a mess right now because I just caught out the volcano touches, but there was a crebenzis and a two or three clown plecos that I forgot were in this tank. And now I have to drain this even lower, but I had to get the jungle bell out because the crebenzis are really good at getting caught up in the jungle veil and then making it really difficult to net out. So I went ahead and ripped out the jungle veil, caused a big lot of stuff in the water. And so I just want to make sure that we get all the fish out of here because the last thing I want to do is start dumping water and wind up dumping fish out too. While I was emptying out the tank above it, I emptied out this 20 long. This one can go as well. It's starting to be a long day here or at least a long morning. Uh, this is the six gallon, this is the bookshelf tank. It's got some geophagus in here. There are a ton of them along with some, a couple of white clouds that were in here originally. And I think there's even one male rummy nose rasbora. So these are gonna come out. I'm gonna put these in a 40 breeder because they need to grow out a little bit anyway. This is only a six gallon tank, a temporary solution. So I'm gonna get these bad boys and then we're gonna get them over there. The last tank down here is a nine gallon and the nook will be done. Last tank, this is the nine gallon long bookshelf tank. By the way, pretty much all the tanks that you see here, we will put them on our website available for pre-order, delivery to the swap starting in July because we gotta start moving some of these tanks out of here, but this is the last one. Well, as you can see, the Nano Nook is done. It's over. It's the end of the road for this area of the fish room. It served us well. All the tanks are done. They're emptied out. The fish are moved. We've got the Volcano Tetras and the 40 Breeder. I think they'll work out just fine there for a while until we get them in their forever home. The Geophagus that were in here are in their larger quarantine, well now just larger tank, because they're gonna get bigger and they needed more space anyway, so it's good to see them in a larger aquarium. But we've still got work to do. Let me show you what's coming up next. So what's coming up next is we've got these 33 longs and these 40 breeders. They're gonna go next. It's gonna open up this wall. Then the 10 gallons in the corner, I think what we're gonna do is kinda do a clockwise sort of uh, clearing out of the aquariums. Once I get the 33s, the 40s over here cleared out and the 10s over there in the corner, that gives me access to this wall so I can redo the wall, get the plumbing out, 
any of the air system that needs to go and then we can really start to make at least that part of the fish room look like a gallery and we're going to start building instead of breaking stuff down. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Like I mentioned, we'll have these aquariums on the website for the swap next month. See you next week.